Greetings to you all. Um, extremely happy to be back again with the word of God. Good to see you all um, as we meditate from the word of God uh, for the next few minutes. Uh, today I just wanted to uh, bring out uh, an important aspect of Christian foundational faith. Um, what is our identity in Christ? Um, who are we in Christ? That's a very important question we need to ask. Because um, sometimes we try to associate ourselves after born again also um, what we are rather than who we are or what we do rather than who we are. Right? We um, try to associate ourselves with the things which we do, it could be some of the ministerial activities or it could be some of the roles we carry. It could be some of the um, attachment uh, with respect to our professions or whatever it could be. But a simple identity of a child of God is like this. I am the child of almighty God. And that is more than enough for us. Nothing else. So that identity carries the entire weightage. It, it is a package. Right? It is a package. We don't need anything else. Right? When Moses died and when the leadership transition was happening, God was talking about Moses in one simple sentence. Right? Even though if, if I would have written Moses' resume, right, it would have been pages after pages because if you look at the accomplishments he had right, with respect to the miracles right, and the, the leadership he was able to give to Israel right, and, and so on and so forth. But when God talked about Moses' death and then he was passing on a very strong message to Joshua, God is saying, my servant Moses died. That's all. Nothing else. But I was thinking that is that the way to introduce a great man of God who was the, the greatest, one of the greatest leader the history has ever seen? Is that enough? Right? Look at our format, the way we introduce people. We introduce people based on what they do. Right? In the corporate world, it is not good enough for me to say my name alone. Because in order to establish my credibility, I need to say what I've been experiencing or what, what is my experience overall in the industry and what are the things which you have done, what are the projects I have undertaken and what are the success stories, all those things will make me credible. Just say, my name is Simchen, that won't work. But in Christendom, when it comes to the kingdom of God, that doesn't matter because the moment you identify yourself as the child of God, whatever you do, Everything should follow based on that identity. So that doesn't mean that there is no individual contribution to the kingdom of God. Definitely, yes. But everything should be under the umbrella of that single identity. I am the child of God. Praise God. It is not that when you start involving in ministry, you are becoming a child of God. You are child of God and because of that, you have a mission. It is other way around. Several times in our life we try to reverse it accordingly as per our convenience so that we will get some limelight but that is not the intent of the word of God. Praise the Lord. So when, when it comes to the identity of a disciple, right? 2 Corinthians chapter 5, 17, Paul is writing about that. When he is talking about his credibility and he is talking about the disciples' credibility, he is telling that therefore if anyone, 517, therefore if anyone, right, if anyone, right, if you if you think that verse from a before standpoint, before and after, before you are an anyone, right, before you are a, a what do you call a person who don't have any address, that we, we will be reading that again in First Peter, uh, chapter 2, verse 9 onwards. We'll come to that. But look at the way Paul is telling, if anyone, insignificant, whether you are a rich man or whether you are a poor man or educated or not educated, it doesn't matter. You will be in the category of anyone. Did you get that? 
Anyone, that's all. No big deal, right? What language you speak, what color you belong to, what race you belong to, what caste, nothing matters. What is your education? You know, you are in the, in the group of anyone. But if anyone is in Christ, oh, that matters. In Christ, that is the most important identity. If anyone is in, in Christ, then afterward, it is all about only one identity. Hallelujah. Right? It is all about one identity. It is like everything is like converging to a single point. Right? And then from that point onwards, it is becoming one unit. It becomes one family. It becomes one single identity. And Paul is telling that you are a new creation. Praise the Lord. So the maximum what you can boast about your identity is I'm a new creation. That's all. Nothing else. You don't have to attach a lot of things along with that identity because old is gone. That's why Paul is telling. There is a little bit of old is left. No, old is gone. You cannot bring the attachment from the old world to the new world as part of a new identity. That is absolutely wrong. And there is no relevance. Do you understand that? When you become the child of God, that is the only identity we have. We don't have to say that child of God who is a program manager, child of God who is a so doctor, the pro, the, all those things are just valid with respect to a, a, a quick introduction. That's all. Nothing else. All things have passed away. Passed away. It is not parked for a while. No. So that we can take it back. No. We cannot go back to that. It is passed away. Right? When we use somebody passed away means dead. Dead. Right? There is no point in telling that no, he's half dead. No, there is no point like that. It's dead. That's all. Passed away. Done. Now, all things have passed away. Behold. So big old world is that, look at, right? Behold, here it comes. What is that? All things have become new. Praise the Lord. All things have become new. My brothers and sisters, are we proud about our identity? In order for us to be proud about our identity, we need to be assured about our identity. Do we have the assurance of the identity? Right? Most of us don't have the assurance of identity because we don't know the beginning. We don't even know the date. We don't even know the date. We don't even the incident. We don't even the circumstance by which we have become a new creation. We don't have any kind of experience. That is the reason why we are not able to be proudly say that I am a new creation. Right? When somebody joined military, there is a specific beginning for that person. From that point onwards, he will identify himself as a person who is part of military. Because he very well remember the joining date. He will very well remember the training. He will very well remember how his identity has been changed. He will very well remember that identity, what kind of lifestyle changes have brought in, in his life. So there is no doubt in his mind that, oh, when did I start this identity? <clears throat> it's very specific, very distinct, right? When, when uh, Enoch started walking with God, it is written that before he was just living, after he started walking with God, there's a distinct timeline in his history. Hallelujah. And if you read Genesis chapter 5, we can see the pattern of people of his forefathers. They just lived, died, lived, died, lived, died. That was the pattern. But all of a sudden, when it came to Enoch, it stopped 65 years. Still 65 years, it was just living. But after 65, after, can you tell me with me, after 
Praise the Lord. That is a very important word. After 65 years, there was a distinct phase in Enoch's life. That is, he walked with God. So 365 years he lived. Right? 365. And there is only two phases. One is before and after. There is no sub-phases in the after phase. Did you get that? If this 300 is not divided among, you know, divided into you know, two, three different categories. No, 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 no. The 300 is one chunk of time. Hallelujah. Either you are walking with God or you are just living. That's all. Either you are a new creation or you are an old creation. That's all. There is no further distinct phase within the new creation. All the things are related to the ministry roles and all those things you do. But from an identity standpoint, there is only one thing. You are a new creation. I'm a child of God. Hallelujah. Oh, praise God. That is a Christian life is very simple. We are trying to complicate by introducing a lot of roles and responsibilities and all those things. All those things should be part of identity. Right? When it comes to 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 9 and 10. Verse number 8, the second part. Listen to me very carefully. They stumble because they were disobedient to the word to which they also were appointed. Look at that. It is not that they were not appointed. It is not that they were excluded intentionally. They were also appointed to receive the word, to obey the word, but they didn't. Then Peter is bringing the distinction of the people who said yes by the grace of God. But that word is very important. I want you to underline. You are not like the disobedient people. The distinction is not based on your race. The distinction is not based on your linguistic capacity. The distinction is not based on how credible your education. The distinction is just based on you said yes. That's all. Nothing else. Hallelujah. Now, but you are a chosen generation. A royal priesthood. A holy nation. His own special people. <laughs> that you may proclaim the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. And he continues. You once were not a people but are now people of God. Who had not obtained mercy but now you have obtained mercy. Verse number 11. Beloved, I beg you as sojourners and pilgrims abstain from fleshly lest which you are against the soul. How beautifully Peter is explaining the identity of what Paul has described in 2nd chapter 5, verse 17 of Corinthians. The new creation, how does that look like? He's just elaborating that into a little more, uh, li little more uh, what he called a practical standpoint and saying that you are a chosen generation. You are a royal priesthood. You are a holy nation, his own special people. That you may proclaim the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Hallelujah. Now, what Peter is trying to say. I just wanted to bring out four aspects of this identity quickly. And then uh, we will close. So number one. This identity will bring a sense of belongingness to you. A sense of belongingness. Very important. A very, very important thing we need to understand. We are owned by God. Can you all say with me? I am owned by God. I am a child of God. Praise the Lord. Right? When you say that I am a child, doesn't make any sense. But I am a child and so and so, it will make the sense. Like when you introduce from a physical standpoint, right? Your father's name is very important. Everybody knows that you are a child. Everybody knows you are a son or a daughter. But whose son are you? Whose daughter are you will make the difference from a worldly standpoint, right? You cannot say that I am a son. That everybody knows I am a daughter. Yeah, you are a daughter of somebody. You are a son of somebody. But who is that somebody? A sense of belongingness coming to picture. He is telling that you were not a people. 
You are not even a people. You don't. Have, you didn't have an identity. You claim that you were very good and all those things, but from a from a kingdom standpoint, you didn't have an identity. That's all. You are not even people. But now you are the people. You didn't obtain mercy, but now you obtain mercy. Oh, the sense of belongingness. Hallelujah. That's very important for us to understand. We belong to God. That is the that is the important credibility. That is the important privilege we should be proud of. But we should have the assurance that are you the child of God? If you are not sure about identity, we will try to attach other identities, other things to our profile so that we will feel good. You don't need anything else. As a child of God, that is more than enough for you to be assured that you are a child of God and have that sense of belongingness. Hallelujah. That is why Paul is telling those, if anyone, right, that anyone don't have any sense of belongingness. Right? It's like an orphan word. <laughs> Orphan child. What do you mean by orphan child? That doesn't mean that he don't have a father. No, he has a father. He don't know who his father is. That is the meaning of orphan. Right? Right? What do you mean by orphan? It's not that you know, he don't have a father. Yes, he has a father and still he don't know the father. That is the problem that he is facing. It's the Lord. We belong to our God. We are a people now. People of his pastor. We have a shepherd. And we have different ways of explaining that. Right? Jesus is our head and we are the body. Cornerstone and stones. Right? There are different way. Wine and you know, we, are, we are the branches. There is different ways of explaining that relationship. But in all these imageries, we can see that we belong. We belong. The branch belongs to the tree. The stone is connected to the cornerstone. The body is connected to the head. Hallelujah. And that sense of belongingness will be valid in eternity. <laughs> Right? No other sense of belongingness. Right? Hallelujah. Now, you are the people of God. You obtain mercy. That's a big deal. If you look at the history of Israel, only few people were able to make it. And here also the situation is same. The path is narrow. The gate is small. Very few people will select. But they are the chosen generation. They have a sense of belongingness. You are not orphan. Hallelujah. That's why Jesus told, I will not leave you as orphan. When I go, I will send another advocate. So that that Advocate that comforter will be with you always as a token of your belongingness. Hallelujah. Right? As an ambassador, have some kind of a security which will remind him saying that he belongs to that country. In the same way, the Holy Spirit is our companion. Every time the Holy Spirit will remind us, you belong to me, you belong to me, you belong to me. You are a new creation. That means you are belong now. Oh, hallelujah. Can you all say, Lord, thank you that I am a child of God. Thank, thank you. That you Lord, I'm a child of God. Thank you, child of God. Hallelujah. Nothing else matters, my dear brothers and sisters. Let me move on. This identity brought us a sense of belongingness. Not only that, it is 
it warrants a lifestyle it warrants a lifestyle this warrants a lifestyle not no no i am already belonged and i can live no 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 it warrants a lifestyle that's why paul is sorry peter is talking about beloved because of that i beg you as sojourners and pilgrims abstain from fleshly lusts which war against the soul <laughs> Hallelujah. Because you are a new creation. Peter is saying that abstain from fleshly lust which war against the soul. Having your conduct honorable among the Gentiles. Because Gentiles are still in the group of anyone. They have not been belonged. They have not been found identity. That when they speak against you as evil, do evil doers, they may by your good works which they observe glorify God in the day of visitation. You know what does that mean? The day of visitation, the Gentiles should come and say that, should not come and say that, you know, Simjan was a believer, but I have not seen anything different in that guy. Then this judgment is not fair. <laughs> Why are you judging me? And this guy had just a tick mark and he didn't leave accordingly and he, you are taking him to heaven and me to hell? No, 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 no. They should be able to accept the justified judgment by looking at your life. Yeah, I have seen this guy. He was different. Oh, praise the Lord. When they speak against you as evildoers, they may by your good works which they observe. They have to observe that. Glorify God in the day of visitation. Praise the Lord. When they, have, they, when they get an opportunity to become a child of God, they should remember you as the model. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That means to live like that person, right? I remember you. I have come across that person in my workplace. I have come across that person in my college. I have come across that person in my school. Hallelujah. It warms a lifestyle. It warms a lifestyle. Once you join the Army, Navy, or Air Force, it warms a lifestyle. You cannot be as previous right as 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 you were behaving in the old world right you have to have a discipline right once you join once you are in the training you cannot just wake up at 10 o'clock in the morning <laughs> after three four days you are out it's very good to have that identity but this that identity warrants a lifestyle a committed lifestyle praise the lord that's why Paul is telling, sorry, Peter is saying that having your conduct honorable among the Gentiles. And when Jesus is talking about the same kind of lifestyle in Sermon on the Mount, can we come to Matthew chapter 5, verse 12, 13 and 14? You are the salt of the earth, but if the salt loses its flavor, how shall it be seasoned? Because the identity without a lifestyle is like a salt without saltiness. Right? In order to enhance the taste, you put salt. And if the salt is don't have, I, sorry, the, the, the saltiness, you are deceived by the identity. Right? It is then good for nothing. Identity without lifestyle is good for nothing. Ah, yeah, it's a salt. You know, the name salt is there. We can keep. No, 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 no. The next 10 minutes, you'll be thrown out. There is no point in keeping a salt which don't have any salt in it. It's a waste of time, waste of resource. Right? It's like having a pilot license, but whenever it comes to fly the plane, you are saying, no, no, that I cannot do. Then what is the point of having the license? You should not tell anything else I can do, but I cannot fly. fly. Ah, come on. 
If your lifestyle is not matching with your identity, what is the point of having the lifestyle? And then if you're asking a surgeon, right, all these uh, 12 years, you did all those things and you have a name that is chief cardiac surgeon and all those things. When it comes to heart surgery, you say, no, 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 that alone I cannot do. Sir, then why did you name yourself as a chief surgeon? Do you understand? Identity without lifestyle and conduct is waste. There is no use. You know, after some time, people will start telling that guy is a fake doctor. And they will start questioning your identity, sir. In which medical college did you study? What is your degree? If you don't know to do surgery. Did you understand? It will be a shame to the identity. I always tell this example, right? When Alexander the Great saw a soldier who was shivering, he told, what is your name, man? My name is Alexander. He told, either you change your name or change your action. You cannot carry the name Alexander and behave like this. It's a shame on my name. You better change your name or change your action. You cannot carry the name Alexander and behave like this. Do you understand? If you are a child of God, it warrants a lifestyle. Hallelujah. It warrants a lifestyle. Let me move on. The sense of belongingness which warrants a lifestyle which has enabled you for a mission. Hallelujah. You have a responsibility. What, Paul, what Peter is telling to proclaim the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Not to proclaim about yourself, not to proclaim about your church, not to proclaim about the organization, to proclaim about him who is the author and the perfecter of this identity, him, Jesus, hallelujah. We are the witnesses of Jesus Christ, not anybody else. Hallelujah. It has to be emerged. The identity has to be led to a lifestyle and the lifestyle has to lead to the mission. There is an order. There is God. What Jesus told in Matthew chapter 5, 14, you are the light of the world. Right? A city that is set on a hill cannot be hidden, nor do they light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a lamp stand, but it gives light to all who are in the house. You are not the light alone, you are the light of the world. That means you have to shine. You have a responsibility. So that they may glorify your Father in heaven. The moment you are saved, God will assign a world to you. It will start with your immediate family and then slowly the world will be expanded. And God is not going to make you accountable for a different world. I am not accountable for people's world. I am only accountable for the world what God has assigned to me. Please understand that. And the moment you God change your world, be sensitive. And when Philip was doing great work in Samaria, the God assigned his world to somewhere else. Go to a place where there is nobody. There is one guy who is coming, Enoch of Ethiopia. If Philip would have stayed in his old world, he would have missed that point. Did you understand that? You have to be very sensitive. That is a lifestyle integrated with a mission. Mission cannot be separated with a lifestyle. And lifestyle cannot be separated with identity. Everything has to be going hand in hand. That's the reason why this identity is a package. Which comes with a sense of belongingness. Which will warrant a lifestyle. And enable you for a mission of witnessing Jesus Christ. Who is the person, the only person who is behind this identity. Verse number 9, first chapter, first Peter chapter 2, you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation. Then he is making it very subjective. 
his own special people. Not special people, his own special people. Hallelujah. And the verse number 10, you are not a people, but now you are not another people. You are the people of God. So the identity, the lifestyle and the message has to be connected. But the problem now is that we silly people are able to separate the message from the lifestyle. Anything you can preach without having any lifestyle aligned to that. That's why, yeah, that is preaching, right? What does that do with my life? And that is not the way Christian life. If that preaching is only matter, why God need you? There are a lot of eloquent preachers than us. Right? If God can accomplish his mission, he can hire the people who passed out of you know, came out of Harvard and all that. Just go and do the message. That's all. No, 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 no. It has to start with identity. It has to go with the lifestyle. And then you have to be carrying the message. Hallelujah. Anybody or any every, you know, person A or B or cannot do the mission. Those who are new creation. The lifestyle. Has to do the mission. Praise God. Because that has to be validated with your lifestyle and that has to be authenticated by your identity. Then only the word will become powerful. That doesn't mean that you are the author of the message. You are carrying the message with a lifestyle backing it. Very important for us to understand. Hallelujah. Sense of belongingness. The warrants, the lifestyle, enable you for a mission. And finally, this identity will make you eternally belong. This is a transferable identity. This is only transferable identity. Right? Whenever we come back from a different country, I cannot get into the country by showing my visiting card or job profile. No, 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 no. That won't work. You cannot come into the country by saying that, what did you do? No, doesn't matter. Do you have the passport for this? That's all. That's all. Nothing else. That is only transferable identity. The child of God. Praise God. And the, the culmination, the climax of the identity completion is going to happen when we meet him face to face. First John chapter 3 verse 1 and 2 then I will close here. See what a great love the Father has lavished on us. How John is progressing that identity. Like that we should be called children of God. Hallelujah. And that is what we are. Right now we are. We are the children of God with a lifestyle and with a mission. Are you all with me? And that is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. If they were not able to identify Jesus, how can you expect that they will identify you? When, when they say identify, this is about acknowledging, right? World will not be able to applaud you. World will hate you because this identity has been hated. Oh, praise God. Dear friends, now we are children of God. Again, he is emphasizing on that. We are the children of God. And what we will be has not yet been made known. Oh, praise God. This identity has an eternity perspective. A futuristic element to be fulfilled. But we know, oh, praise God. This, the knowledge is part of this identity. When you are becoming a new creation, we know something. What is that we know? When Christ appears, hallelujah, the author and the perfecter of this identity appears, we shall be like him, not anybody. For we shall see him 
as he is. Oh, praise God. I want you to underline that. As he is. Hallelujah. The glorious, glorious appearance of our master. Not as a crucified Christ. Not as a common man. But in the glorious appearance, we are going to see him as he is. And our body also will be glorified. That is the final climax of this identity which we are going to see in eternity. And that knowledge we have, and that is what we call as hope. That hope is our knowledge. That, sorry, that the knowledge is our hope. One day, one day, oh, praise God, I will be transformed. I will be transformed. Praise God. I'll be transformed to his image, to his image. Oh, that is the completion of this identity in Christ. If anyone in Christ is a new creation with a sense of belonging to family, God is our father. Warrants a lifestyle which is a committed, follow me. The call was continuous. Right? Just Jesus didn't call and then said, oh, okay, you can continue as you are. No, follow me. It's a progression. It's a lifestyle. It's a cross-based lifestyle. Cross-centered Christian life. Which will automatically enable you for a mission to proclaim the good news about Jesus, not anybody else. About a person, not about a church. A person which has the hope as the token of our future transformation. We know. Oh, praise God. We know. We know. Now it is a knowledge. We know that when Christ appears. Paul is establishing that we don't have time. In 1 Corinthians chapter 15. He is bringing that case in a very, very meticulous way. That guys. Church. You need to understand. How you know you will be transformed. He is explaining that in a way that. Jesus has resurrected from the dead. You believe that? Yes. If Jesus has resurrected, we will be also resurrected. How do you know that? Because it is written. If it is written, how do you prove that? Because Jesus Christ first coming. Right? First coming was proved. First Corinthians chapter 15, 3. According to the scripture, he was born. According to the scripture, he lived. According to the scripture, he was buried. According to the scripture, he was resurrected. If that scripture came to true and it became a history, the second coming also will become a history one day so that we also will be transformed. Oh, praise God. The first coming was a mystery for the Old Testament saints. And that became a history. And then we are part of the other side of the history. But the second coming is a mystery right now for us. But one day it will become a history. And that is the proof that we will be also transformed. Hallelujah. If you don't believe in the resurrection of the saints, that means you are not believing the first coming of Jesus Christ. As simple as that. If that has happened according to the scriptures, not just like that accidentally. If that has happened according to the scripture. As per the scripture. He told he's going to come back again. This will also be a history one day. And you will be all part of that history. Hallelujah. If anyone in Christ. Is a new creation. Let's be assured about this. Identity. A sense of belongingness. A lifestyle which warrants a holy life, a separated, a consecrated life. Enable us for a mission of praise God. And with the hope that one day we will be transformed to his image. May God bless you.